Hi there, Parenting fans. This is Admin Gold King Major here with another more phenomenal interview. And today I am interviewing the voice of Auric the Conqueror from Parenting CEO, Elgar from Parenting Turbo and in Space, and multiple Parenting Monster voices. I have here Derek Stephen Prince. Hello and good evening to you. Hello. So, tell the parent fans out there, how did you get into becoming the vo a parent voice actor? What, how did it start? Um, well, for those of you who may not know, Power Rangers was actually my very first voiceover ever, as far as Auric the Conqueror goes. Um, the way that it happened was not necessarily by accident, um, but... Uh, a lot of it had to do with my persistence in wanting to try and get into the voiceover business. So um, I had taken some classes from various people in the industry. And um, at that point in time, this was way before electronics like MP3s, all that stuff. The internet was like an idea that was just coming into fruition. So a lot of everything in terms of uh, digital media was not existent. <laughs> um, and at that particular point in time, um, the only way to really deliver something to a potential person in the industry as a casting director or a, um, a, a potential agent was by audio tape. Yeah. Um, so... I had taken a bunch of classes from people in the industry. Um, the, there was also a publication called The Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. Um, and they came out with two different issues in California. One for animation. One was in November, the other one was in February. So the one that I happened to be looking at was in February. Yeah. And I, at that particular point in time, there was a way for actors to actually contact casting directors themselves with a phone number. They're, they had phone numbers published at that time. So I called pretty much everybody in the industry. Um, I just went down the list of all of the people that were in production or pre-production. Yeah. And um, I was at my wit's end, basically. Yeah. Um, I kept getting the figurative door slammed in my face. And um, it just so happened that Saban um, had this one particular full page ad, so I called the number on the ad. And the receptionist who answered the phone, uh, I, you know, I went through my spiel, um, said, hi, this is Derek Stephen Prince, I'm a voice actor, I'm trying to get my, uh, my demo out there, and was wondering if I could submit to you guys as well. I had no idea who Saban was at the time, by the way. <laughs> they meant nothing to me. Yeah. Um, and um, so after I went through my spiel, there was this pause on the other on, on the other end. So I thought like maybe you know like maybe my call dropped, you know. Or and I said hello, and she said uh, just hang on a second. I'm looking at my calendar. I'm going okay. So I'm on hold for probably like maybe 30 seconds, which seemed like eternity at that point, <laughs> because I was just assuming I was going to get a no. Yeah. And she said, so what are you doing next Thursday? I'm going, I don't know why. She goes, well, I was wondering if you'd like to come audition for a show that we're doing called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I'm going, um, you don't want to... You don't want me to send my demo to you? You you just want me to come in next next Thursday? And she goes, why do I need to hear your demo? I can hear what you sound like on the phone. <laughs> I'm going, point taken. <laughs> um, so I went in there and I auditioned for Oric the Conqueror. Yeah. And I don't know how many other actors work for the, for the same job. Um, I don't even remember what happened after the audition, but obviously I got the job. <laughs> and yep. um, after that, I went in to um, also do some, I think it was some background stuff with Wendy Lee. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was um, Sculpina. Yeah, okay. So I went in and, and just did some background stuff, 
you know, and um, because a lot of the people that were directors, they had guest directors. It yeah. wasn't just one director that directed Power Rangers for yeah. the voice actors. And at that point in time, Johnny Young Bosch, who was, I believe, the Green Ranger? Uh, Johnny Young Bosch, he was the Green Ranger in Power Rangers Zio, and he was the Black Ranger in Mike Morgan Power Rangers, the second one. Yes, so he, in Oric, which one was he? Was he, he black was or Zio. green? Okay. Oric was um, like a soldier warrior. Yeah. He was okay. like, Oric the Conqueror conquers the... Uh, right, right, right. So, Something like that. Sorry about my bad impression of Oric, <laughs> but he's the real guy that does it. But um, <laughs> that that's pretty much how it started. And um, because of the directors that were in that, that then led me to other auditions for Power... in the Power Rangers series. Yeah. And um, that just morphed <laughs> into me getting anime jobs. That's because excellent. a lot of the directors that were guest directors on there also directed other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, working with Lex Lan, who was the voice of Eclipta in Power Rangers in Space and Ride Gog in Power Rangers Turbo, what was that like for you, working with him for two, three seasons? He was also another character, he was in Zeo, um, I don't remember his name. Um, I've gone it. It's gone. It's gone. But let's let's land. What was it like working with him on two, three seasons of Power Rangers? This is a common question that uh, actors like us get. What's it like to work with Johnny and Bosch, Lex Lang, Sandy Fox, Wendy Lee, Michael Sorich, etc., etc. Um, in all honesty, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Because I never worked with him like in the same booth. Yeah. Um, so as far as roles that he did in the various seasons of Power Rangers, as well as other stuff that we both worked on, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could answer that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the it's not atypical for a voice actor to not even know what show he's doing, to not even know what character he's doing until he actually goes in the booth and is told what he's doing. <laughs> but then to add to that, the fact that we have no idea who else is working on the same show. Yeah. We just are in there for two hours. We memorize lines. We look up at the screen. We match the mouth flaps. And then we leave, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Funny so, thing is, is that Auric did, it, it, Auric's mouth didn't move, it was just blank. Yep. And uh, Elgar's mouth was just, um, elect um, I'm an electronics. Yes. So that was really funny. Yeah. Um, speaking of funny moments, do you have any funny mo mem memories and moments from your time on Power Rangers? I remember the, the one in space when... Divatox? Um, in space is astronomer. Astronomer. Who was who was his aunt? Um, he, Elgar's aunt. Oh, that was um, Divatox. Divatox. Okay, so I do remember that there were some some funny moments in in Div when I had to play off of Divatox. <laughs> I never saw the actress who did it. Um, I I always came in after they had already recorded everything. Yeah. And then came in for the you know for the for the dub. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was, I mean, I, I, rem I can't remember anything specifically except for just, you know, the, the, some of the stuff that Elgar would have to do, like, you know, <laughs> don't kill me, I'm your favorite nephew! You. you know, um, just stuff like that. It was, it was just fun. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that's what is so special about you as a voice actor. It's like when they hear the voice, they instantly think of the character. And that sort of brings that. <laughs> I mean, by listening to you as the voice of Elgar, it, Elgar was yeah, my yeah. favorite villain to Paris just because he always made me laugh. Um, I think one of my favorite moments was there was a cro monster called Chromat, and there was a wedding bit that he did with Chromat where. Chroma had a bouquet of flowers and you, Elgar came in and was like, here we are, here we are. <laughs> and he was just giggling and Diva Tux was like, aren't they a lovely couple? And Porto was just like, <laughs> it was a really funny moment. I just love those moments. Cause yeah. it's like, when you're a kid, you don't think about those sort of things. So I think when you look at it as an adult, you think what's going on there. But as a kid, it's so innocent. It's like, oh, we're just a couple or something. And it's so funny. Right. Um, so what, what do you think 
has been your, I mean, from working on all the different Power Ranger characters, what do you think has been your most favorite one to do? I'd have to say Elgar. Elgar. I mean, it's the one I, it's the one that stands out the most to me. Um, because of the, the short time that I did on, on, uh, Zio. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a lot of memories of that. Yeah, because it came later right. in the series, like more towards half, maybe quarter way. And I don't really remember Tretron very much, um, but I remember doing him, but I don't remember yeah. the voice, nor do I remember the voice for Auric, um, nor do I remember the voice for T Tire Org, yeah, which I, I did as well. Which, but yeah, with Tretron, he, he always had this obsession of wanting to destroy the Magnet Defender. Yeah. Was like, Magnet Defender, you will play for dishonoring me. Something like that, <laughs> but you know, I again, don't... I can only do amateur. I mean, right. he's the he's the real deal here. So, but he out of it. out of all the the Power Ranger shows, that's probably the one that stands out the most, only because Elgar was consistently in almost every episode. Yeah, both in both in um, uh, Turbo as well as in Space. Yeah, so it's hard not to forget about that character. Yeah, I think it's because you've done that one with him the longest, yes. and you worked with that character the longest, that's probably why that one's more closer to you, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what do you think, You hope? do you hope that you can do some more Power Ranger voices in the future? I would love to, but the, the thing that has changed since then to now is that none of the Power Rangers is ever done in America. Oh. It's all done in Australia now. New Zealand, I think it is. New Zealand, is yeah. Yes. So they just use actors from New Zealand for the dub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, but you know, it might come back to America one day. You never know. It might. And if it does, I'm sure you'll be there to audition and. Yeah, absolutely. So I think this is a question that's probably going to be a bit heartbroken. What? How did you feel when Elgar was killed off in the Countdown to Destruction? Hated it. It's like you know, um, it. Uh, when, it's almost like when you do a character so often yeah. and you go in for every episode and then, you know, it's like, you, even though it sounds strange because I created the voice, but it's like he's a part of me and because, you know, it's like, are you kidding me? I'm dying? It's like, no way. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> this is it. Okay, great. You know. Yeah. But I mean... You know, it was fitting. It had to be done. Yeah. Because the audience would, you know, the fans who were watching the show, it's like, if you don't kill Elgar, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think it's like, because obviously originally Power Interest in Space was going to end at that season, but then due to popularity, um, that's when they brought in Power Interest Lost Galaxy. And I think that was, I think that's a lifesaver. And who would have thought that? 20 years on, Power Rangers yeah. is still going strong to right. this day. Absolutely. And I think that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, I think to wrap this up, um, is there a message in Elgar's voice? Because uh, you know the fans will love this. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say to the fans in Elgar's voice? What would you say to his fans, do you think, to say thank you or whatever? What do you think? Well, El you know, for those of you that are still watching Power Rangers, good for you. <laughs> but um, for those of you who... Uh, uh, are not watching Power Rangers but still love the old shows, well, then, you know, thanks for being good fans, and, uh, all I can say is, uh, just in your daily life, be good humans! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, well. So, Elgar, can you demand the Ranger fans to subscribe to our channel? Hey, those of you watching this right now, if you're not subscribers, do it! I'm gonna come hunt you down and kill you! <laughs> <laughs> Joking! <laughs> Not! <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. This has been a great interview. So this is Admin Goldkin Ranger saying please remember to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time in another more phenomenal interview. Bye bye Ranger fans!